Hi, this lecture is on modular polynomials and is really aiming to bridge the gap between LWE and module LWE. So really the, uh, the main objective of this lecture is to understand how to compute in the space ZQ of X quotient by X to the N plus one. So we will uh, try to make sense of what it means and then how to perform operations uh, easily. So first, polynomials from the Calc 1 perspective are functions uh, uh, of the form x maps to uh, a sum of ai to the xi's, okay? And in calculus, we're, we're concerned about um, uh, looking at the variations of, the, of such function, uh, checking its minima, uh, extrema, and um, and so and so on. And so uh, we have a completely uh, different perspective. We have an algebraic perspective on polynomials, but first we need to, to, to get to that, we need to define a, sort of an abstract uh, algebra notion of a ring. So a ring is a set equipped with binary operations uh, plus and multiplication, or we think of them at least as the, uh, the addition and the multiplication. And then we need to have the following properties. Uh, so first, R equipped with the addition has to be a group. So it has to satisfy those properties here uh, of an additive group. So uh, commutative, uh, so uh, and it's a uh, so um, so commutative group in particular, uh, but also all the uh, axioms of a group. Now, R equipped uh, with the multiplication is not quite a group. It's more what we call a monoid. Uh, we still have associativity of the multiplication law, and there is uh, there is a, a, a unit a, there is a unit. So it's a, it's a, we use one of those definitions of a ring where we know that there is a unit uh, uh, element for the uh, multiplication, but not every element is necessarily invertible uh, for the multiplication. Okay, so that's really the the, the main obstruction. For, for the ring uh, to be a group, the non-zero elements are not necessarily invertible. And finally, multiplication is distributed with respect to the addition. Uh, so that means that A times B plus C is A times B plus A times C. So a prototypical example of you, for, with respect to uh, the kinds of rings is that uh, we're interested in this lecture is uh, Z mod and Z, the congruence classes, uh, the residue classes of uh, integers modulo n equipped with uh, the addition and the multiplication between classes. Now, uh, the polynomials from a, an abstract algebra perspective are uh, identified by coefficients. So it's a set, uh, so it's, a, it's an n tuple of coefficients uh, uh, in the ring. And a n, a sub n must be non-zero, okay? So we denote this by p of x is equal to a n times x n plus a n minus one times x n minus one and so on until uh, a zero. Okay, and the notation for the for the the polynomials uh, over R is R uh, bracket x. So in this case, uh, two important uh, uh, notions are um, the degree. So the degree is this last non-zero coefficient. And if that coefficient in question is one, then we say that the polynomial is monic. So over z of x, for example, uh, p of x can be x squared plus one, this is monic, degree two, uh, or x cubed plus x plus two, this is monic of degree three. Now, uh, uh, polynomials can be equipped with an addition and a multiplication. Um, so the addition is very straightforward, is uh, each coefficient of the addition of the two uh, uh, polynomials is the addition of the coefficients, understood of course that if one degree is greater than the other one, uh, then we just set the coefficients to be zero, okay? And the multiplication is uh, slightly uh, 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 more complicated, but, but not much, right? It's just the sum over uh, a k b l, where k plus l is equal to uh, to i, okay. So this is uh, uh, the coefficient uh, of index i of the polynomial that is the multiplication of the two polynomials as in, given as input. So for example, if we have x squared plus one and x cubed plus x plus two, then we get the addition, uh, which is of course a polynomial of uh, degree 
uh, less than uh, the max of, uh, of the degrees of the input polynomials and the degree of, uh, of the multiplication of P and Q here is degree that is the sum of the two degrees. Now we can additionally divide uh, by a monic polynomial in the same fashion as we divide integers. So with uh, a quotient and a remainder. So um, for um, A and B, given as input with B is monic, then uh, dividing A by B means finding uh, the uh, quotient Q and a remainder R of X of degree strictly less than B such that A is equal to QB plus R. And the procedure, assuming of course that the degree uh, of A is uh, strictly larger than the degree of B, because otherwise the uh, uh, A is going to be uh, its own remainder and the quotient will be zero. Um, so um, we uh, set uh, Q equals zero and then K is my M minus M. And so as long as K is greater or equal to zero, then uh, we set A to A minus uh, the coefficient of index uh, K plus M times XK times B. And then we adjust Q accordingly by adding that coefficient. And then we decrease K, okay? And then uh, at the end of this process, the degree of A is going to be strictly less than the degree of B, and we just set the remainder to be the current A. And let's work it out on an example. Assume that we have A is x4 plus 2x plus 1, and B equals x squared plus 1. So we start with q equals 0 and k equals 2, and uh, we say that A is updated to be A minus x squared B. So which is minus x squared plus 2x plus 1, and q is updated that way, q plus x squared, uh, which becomes simply x squared. Now the next updation of a, we take here the coefficient of, um, of degree uh, 3 in the current uh, version of a. So here uh, that coefficient is 0, right? Because there is no term. It turns out it just canceled. So there is no term of x3, so that's OK. We just update a by a minus 0 times x plus b. So a is unchanged at this particular step. And q becomes q plus 0 times x, which is also uh, leaving q unchanged. That's a little bit accidental, but it happens. Then for k equals 0, we do a becomes a minus the coefficient of, of, uh, in, uh, of degree 2 here of a. So that's minus 1 times b. And that gives us 2x plus 2. And Q is updated accordingly by saying it's Q plus that coefficient times X to the zero. So that X squared minus one. And at the end, we can verify that X squared plus one times X squared minus one. So our calculated Q plus uh, our remainder two X plus two is equal to uh, our original polynomial. Okay, so this worked. Now, we can also define congruence relations in the same way that we have congruence relations uh, over the integer. So assume that we have a monic polynomial, then two uh, polynomials in R of x are congruent if their difference is divisible by uh, the modulus, okay, the modulus b. So um, the remainder of the division is the only element in the congruence class uh, that has degree uh, strictly less than the modulus. And uh, uh, we can define the space of the congruence classes by uh, R of X quotient by B. So we denote that Rx divided by B, which is a set of congruence classes uh, modulo B. And we can, this becomes a ring with the addition, uh, which is straightforwardly defined as the addition of two classes, the class of the addition of the polynomials, and the multiplication of two classes is the multiplication, so the class of the multiplication of the polynomials. Now, moving on, we have a very special case of interest when uh, which we'll be using to define a module uh, LWE, so as uh, a generalization of the LWE problem. So here we will focus on the case of Rx quotient by x to the n plus 1. Uh, so arithmetic has special properties in this particular ring. So uh, we can see that by first looking at the multiplication by x to the i math. So that multiplication takes a polynomial and I mean the class of a polynomial and 
maps it to the class of that polynomial multiplied by the class of x to the i. So if i plus j is less than n, then uh, the map mu i applied to x to the j is x to the i plus j, okay? And then if it's greater than n, then this map, uh, we can easily verify that because of the, the special form of the modulus that it's minus x to the i plus j minus n. Now, we can turn arithmetic in this ring, so r to the x divided by x to the n plus 1 into uh, linear algebra. So uh, if, 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 if elements are defined uh, by the vectors of coefficients, in the basis, you know, one x, x squared, and so on until x to the n minus one. Then multiplication by x to the i is a matrix vector multiplication by this matrix, where here we are uh, at the ith uh, uh, row here, where uh, starting, uh, of course, with row zero, uh, where we have a block of identity in here, a block of minus identity, right? So let's work it out an example. Assume n equals 3 and i equals 1. So this is what a1 looks like. So here's our block of identity uh, starting at i equals 1. And then here our block of minus identity, of course, here, because we chose very uh, simple values. Uh, uh, we have just that minus 1 here. So uh, let's verify that, of course, it gives us all the arithmetic operations. So all the uh, uh, images of the basis vectors. Uh, so x times 1, so first uh, 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 first basis vector uh, is, uh, uh, so modulo x cubed plus 1 is x, right? And that does satisfy uh, uh, our property because this matrix times this vector 1, 0, 0 is 0, 1, 0, which corresponds to the polynomial x. Now x times x, so second vector of the basis, is uh, so 0, 1, 0, we multiply it by our matrix A1, and that gives us 0, 0, 1, which is in correspondence to the vector x squared, this still works. And now finally, we take our last vector, uh, so our last element of the basis, so x squared, uh, and we multiply it by x, modulo x cubed plus 1, and that gives us minus 1, and uh, that also corresponds to what we have uh, in, through the uh, matrix vector multiplication. Now, the fact that we get a minus one here is because x cubed can be written down as one, the quotient times uh, x cubed plus one, minus one. So that's the, int uh, the polynomial division of x cubed by x cubed plus one. So here's our quotient and here's our remainder. So that's why uh, we have this property and that also justifies that the, uh, uh, the uh, matrix multiplication does give us uh, uh, the vector that is in correspondence to uh, the multiplication by x uh, of applied to x squared. So um, that worked on that example. And um, from that, we can define certain matrices so that's uh, using the multiplication by xi maps to define a multiplication by a map for any polynomial a, uh, well, for any polynomial a, basically, I was going to say, uh, that belongs to z q of x uh, mod x to the n plus 1. So, uh, but of course, uh, a polynomial, so the class of a polynomial a can be decomposed as a linear combination of the classes of the polynomial x to the i for i strictly less than n. And what we can do is to say, well, the linear map, uh, that is the multiplication uh, by a, is the sum of the ai times multiplication by x to the i. And matrix-wise, what it means is the matrix of that map is given by the sum of the ai uh, capital AI. And it has a very special shape because here, here, this is the sum. So um, we have uh, on the first column, we have exactly our vector of coefficient of A. And then the second column, see, you have this shift, right? So uh, those vectors of A uh, go from 0 to n minus 2, and then it wraps up with minus A to the n minus 1. 
And then this, can, this pattern continues up until the last column where basically we have here only a zero uh, without the minus sign. And then it wraps up with minus a1, minus a2, minus a and minus one. Okay, so that, that property is expressed uh, by calling it circulant. So um, let's just uh, 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 finish by an example. So assume that n equals three and that uh, we want to look at the matrix that represents the map that is a multiplication by a equals x squared plus two x plus one. So with the rule that we defined previously, this is what ma looks like. So this is the vector of coefficients of a, so one, two, one, and then we can, we could, we start by shifting. So now we have one, two, and then it wraps up with a minus one, and we shift once more, and then we have the one here, and then minus two, minus one. Now let's apply this map to x squared plus one. So the correspondence here is the vector one, zero, one. Uh, and so MA, so the, the, the matrix vector multiplication gives us minus one, one, two. So you can easily verify that. And now let's verify most importantly that it corresponds to our uh, vector multiplication, sorry, uh, polynomial multiplication. So P two times A is X to the four plus two X cubed plus two X squared plus two X plus one. Now we need to reduce this mod x to the three plus one. And if we do that, so we do our uh, polynomial division. So here is the quotient and here is our remainder. And look at this remainder here. And that corresponds exactly to the vector two, one, minus one. So it means that it also works in the case of uh, general polynomials. So thank you for listening. And this really was to pave the way for the definition of the module LWE problem, uh, which is a generalization of the LWE problem where elements are in ZQ of X quotient by X to the N plus one. Thank you very much.